Today we shall discuss identification of firearms based on the marks created on the cartridge case as well as on the bullets. The cartridge case, when it is loaded and ready for firing, the firing pin, the trigger is pressed and this firing pin impinges on the sensitive explosive which is normally called primary explosive, it generates a flame. The piercing flame ignites the propellant charge. This creates a large volume of gas, creating pressure in the cartridge. This increase in pressure pushes the projectile or projectiles outside the cartridge through the chamber towards the target. Once this moves out, it leaves number of marks which are detailed as below. Number one, when the bullet goes out of the barrel, out of the cartridge, the cartridge case moves backward according to Newton's third law of motion where action is equal to the reaction. The bullet goes forward and the cartridge case moves backward. The result is that it impinges on the firing pin, creating marks of the firing pin. It also gets pressed against the breech face of the breech block, creating marks on it. These marks help us in the identification of the bullet as well as the chamber also leaves its mark because the cartridge case expands due to heat and some of the marks of the chamber may get transferred on the cartridge case which again becomes helpful in the identification of chamber marks on the cartridge. The ejector and extractor which are used for creating marks of ejector and extractor and these marks also help in the identification of the cartridge case. So far as the bullet is concerned, the marking which are received by the bullet are examined with the help of comparison microscope and these striations created by the chamber are compared in this comparison microscope to ensure to opine that this bullet has been fired from this very firearm. The fired cartridge case, which is also called empty, is first extracted by an extractor, which leaves its specific marks and then ejected out of the firearm. And these marks are also specific as far as the ejector is concerned. And both of them, ejector as well as extractor marks, coupled with chamber marks, also pin marks are helpful in the identification of cartridge case, whereas bullet will get identified by microscopic examination using a comparison microscope, although there are automatic comparison microscopes also available for the purpose. After studying this module, you shall be able to know about the basic principles of firearm identification, the identification from cartridge cases and bullets, the class as well as the individual characteristic of firearms. Identification of firearms. When the trigger of the firearm is pressed, it releases the hammer or the striker with considerable force. The striker compresses a pressure sensitive material contained in the percussion cap. This generates a hot piercing flame which ignites the propellant charge. The charge quickly transforms into gas. Due to limited space in the cartridge case, the large volume of the gas so produced develops a very high pressure. The pressure so developed forces out the bullet or the short charge through the barrel towards the target. While the bullet moves forward, the cartridge case is pushed backwards. 
The cartridge case therefore comes in contact with the firing pin and the breech face of the breech block and picks up marks from their surface. The cartridge which also expands all round due to the tremendous pressure developed in it and comes in intimate contact with the chamber and sometimes may carry chamber marks. The fired cartridge case is extracted out of the chamber by an extractor and then ejected out of the gun by an ejector. In the process, both extractor and ejector are likely to leave marks on the cartridge case. All these marks are very useful which can afford identity of the bullet or the cartridge case with the concerned firearm. Identification of weapon and cartridge cases A firearm which is manufactured in a factory will bear various markings put by the manufacturer for the purpose of identification like serial number, maker's name, caliber, number of lands and grooves, etc. These markings are called as class characteristics. These can be of helpful in identifying the owner. Besides the above markings, there are several other marks which occur on different parts of the firearm not within the control of the manufacturer. These marks are called as accidental marks or individual characteristics which are very helpful in identifying the firearm. Some of the important accidental marks are described below. 1. Breech block marks. When a cartridge is fired, pressure of the order of 2 to 20 tons per square inch is generated. Under such high pressure, the cartridge case moves backwards and is thrust against the breech face. The irregularities on the breech face may thus leave their impressions on the head of the cartridge case. These marks are known as breech face marks. The breech block of a weapon is usually surface finished by a milling tool or file, either of which leaves tiny striation marks on the face of the block. At the moment of firing, the base of the cartridge case strikes with a tremendous force on the breech block, registering impression on its surface. The marks may occur prominently on the primer cap, which is made of softer metal than the rest of the surface firing pin impression. When a cartridge is fired, the irregularities on the firing pin, which is made up of a material harder than that of the cartridge case, is imprinted on the percussion cap. These are called firing pin marks. Because the firing pin strikes the primer cap with force, there will be marks of firing pin on its surface. These marks are due to imperfections, finishing marks, etc., that is different for different firearms and are rarely never duplicated. Marks from extractor and ejectors. When a fired cartridge case is extracted and ejected, the irregularities on the extractor and ejector are imprinted on the rim of cartridge case. These are called extractor and ejector marks. All firearms have some form of extractor or ejector. The extractor marks are not found on pistol cartridge cases. The pistols have special ejectors which are likely to leave marks on the cartridge cases fired in it. Repeater and automatic arms normally form definite and recognizable marks like size, shape and location on the rim of the cartridge case. Sometimes, the sliding marks offer more positive identification. Marks due to expansion. At the time of firing, the cartridge case expands and may take up marks or certain irregularities, which may occur in the region where the barrel, the breech block and the extractor meet. Bullet identification. Bullets fired through rifled firearms receive both the class as well as accidental characteristics of the barrel 
from which they are fired. The bullet will show not only the primary markings left by the hands and grooves of the gun barrel but will also reveal the fine striations in all the marks. These are the imprints of the small irregularities in the barrel and are never duplicated by different weapons. To determine whether or not a particular gun has fired the question bullet, a detailed comparison is made of marking on the question bullet with corresponding markings on the test bullets fired through the suspected gun. A bullet comparison microscope is used for this determination. The suspect bullet and the test fired bullet are illuminated obliquely in order to create shadows that reveals the ridges and furrows engraved by the gun. The test bullets are obtained by firing the suspected weapon into a water tank or a bullet recovery box filled with cotton or cotton waste to obtain bullet bearing mark characteristics of the barrel when the bullet seized at the crime scene is greatly deformed or when only fragments of it are recovered, comparative chemical analysis of the question and the known bullets by spectrographic analysis may yield useful information. Comparison through microscopy Introduction The comparison microscope is probably the most important and most widely used scientific instrument in the modern crime laboratory and thus it has been discussed first. The first comparison microscope to be used in the field of criminology was a very crude instrument compared to the highly developed instruments now available. It was designed by Albert S. S. Bourne for application in the field of document examination. Components of comparison microscope A comparison microscope consists essentially of two compound microscopes having identical optical system so that they give the same magnification connected by an optical bridge containing a combination of prisms such that by viewing two separate objects, one under each microscope through a single eyepiece, the objects may be compared by bringing the images of parts of each into juxtaposition. Methodology the optical field seen through the single eyepiece is a circular area divided into two parts by a thick dark line. The object under left hand microscope, say the evidence bullet, is seen in the left half of this optical field and object under right hand microscope, say a test bullet is seen only in the right half of the field. Assuming that there are two bullets to be compared, an evidence bullet and a test bullet, the evidence bullet is placed in a bullet mount under the left hand microscope and adjusted so that it points directly across, that is, at right angles to the central dividing line and in a position such that, say, a third of the rear portion of the bullet is in view. It is now rotated in its mount by turning the appropriate knob until a well-defined groove or land comes into view and this is brought into the best possible focus by raising of microscope stage carrying the bullet mount. All focusing is done by raising the microscope stages. Then the test bullet is placed so that about two-thirds of the nose end of the bullet is in view pointing in the same direction as the evidence bullet of course and after lining up the edges of the test bullet with those of the evidence bullet the test bullet is slowly rotated to bring successive grooves and lands into view until one is found if any such is present which not only has the same width but which also has longitudinal striations or tiny groovelets scorings which extends around the boundary line joining and coinciding with similar markings on the evidence bullet. These markings will be parallel to the edges of the groove. 
when this condition is attained the bullets are said to be matched and by means of a camera placed above the instrument a photograph of the matched bullet is taken the mount for the bullets are provided with removable studs to the end of which the bullets are attached by a suitable wax several pairs of these studs are provided usually three around the periphery of each pair indexing numbers are engraved usually from 1 to 4 5 or 6 corresponding to the number of lands and grooves most often found after marking the bullets which have been matched they are reset on the studs so that each of the marked grooves will be in the number 1 position the two bullets are now rotated in the number 2 position and compared if these grooves are found to match, the matching is photographed and this process is repeated until all the grooves and lands have been compared. Naturally, as many matches are obtained as possible because convincing one and convincing a jury beyond all reasonable doubt are two quite different matters. The expert must always keep in mind the fact that juries are always unpredictable. If some pairs of grooves or lands match and others do not, the expert must be prepared to explain why they do not. It must not be supposed that convincing matching can always be obtained. Every examiner, no matter how experienced or expert he may be, has had the experience of spending many hours in the futile attempt to get satisfactory and convincing matching in cases where there was every reason to believe that he had the gun that fired the evidence bullet or shell. There are many causes for such failures. The evidence bullet may have been too small for the bore of the gun. The barrel may have been very rusty or old. The bullet may have been so deformed that no evidence of lance or groove is present, etc. Forensic relevance Up to 25% of striation in a non-match and in excess of 75% of the striation in a match will show concordance in view of the fact that out of the thousands of lines present on any one comparison, number must, by pure chance alone, show agreement. While carrying out microscopic comparison, the accidental agreement in a non-match must be recognized by the examiner and mentally documented as being non-relevant. It is an ability to reject non-matching striation while accepting those of relevance, which is the identifying feature of an experienced comparison microscopist. The actual process of assessing which striation is of relevance, firstly, each of the available fired ammunition for this example bullet is compared to all the other test bullets until one which is representative of match is found. This is then used as a reference for comparison with the fire bullet in actual case. During the search for representative match, one is attempting to find out a pattern of easily recognizable striation which can be mentally retained and used in subsequent comparison with the case of bullets. This identification of a striation pattern can only be obtained through extensive experience in the matching of striation. Should there be a suspected match with the case bullet, then each of the test bullets must also be compared with the case exhibit to determine whether the agreement was accidental or a match exists which is under doubt. Photographic Comparison The comparison microscope and other comparison devices are useful and convenient, but they are not indispensable. All comparisons can be made by an ordinary microscopic and close-up attachment can replace photomicrographic camera if necessary. Summary A firearm which is manufactured in a factory will bear various markings put by the manufacturer for the purpose of identification, like 
serial number, maker's name, caliber, number of lands and groups, etc. These markings are called as class characteristics. The cartridge case comes in contact with the firing pin and the breech face of the breech block and picks up mark from their surface. The cartridge, which also expands all round due to the tremendous pressure developed in it and comes in intimate contact with the chamber and sometimes may carry chamber marks. There are several other marks which occur on different parts of the firearm not within the control of the manufacturer. These marks are called as accidental marks or individual characteristics which are very helpful in identifying the firearm. Bullets fired through rifle firearms receive both the class as well as accidental characteristics of the barrel from which they are fired. The bullet will not only show the primary markings left by the hands and grooves of the gun barrel but will also reveal the fine striations in all the marks.